We begin tonight with this Starbucks marked by bullet holes and it remains closed in Northeast Portland's Hollywood area. Police shot a man there last night. They said he was armed and had been screaming at Starbucks employees, many of whom locked themselves in a back room. Hello everyone, I'm Nina Melhoff. Thank you for joining us. It turns out police say that man is a federal fugitive and tonight he is in the hospital and those employees are getting counseling. Here's KGW's Maggie Vespa. Time and time again, this scene caught people off guard today. A Starbucks closed, a door and window boarded up, bullet holes marking the windows. People who were here last night know why. You just heard a lot of gunfire. Bam, 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 bam. Portland police say those shots came from the guns of four officers. They fired at a man who they say had entered the Starbucks next to the Hollywood Fred Meyer and was acting erratically. This woman That's described yeah, what she was, saw. His body movements were like twitching all over the place and he looked like he was almost like having a seizure of some sort. Police say the man started yelling at workers who hid in the back. He tried to follow. When officers showed up, they say the man pulled out a firearm. They shot him multiple times outside the Starbucks. By this point, the Fred Meyer next door was in lockdown. A rep for Fred Meyer tells us they have counselors on hand for employees who were here last night and they're offering to pay for more counseling sessions in the future. Starbucks also issued a statement saying we are thankful that our partners or employees and customers are safe. Our focus at this time is on supporting our partners during this scary situation and we would direct any further questions to local authorities. Employees at both locations declined to go on camera. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. And tonight we are still waiting on the name of the man who was shot. Police are only saying he's 34 years old and that federal fugitive. He is expected to survive. The officers who shot him are on paid leave, which is standard protocol. Turning to weather now tonight and some great photos coming in from our viewers. This is Hood River today. Thanks to Luis Chavez for sending it in. It looks like it could be about an inch or less of snow with the orchard there in the background. And this one from Susie Alexander Stevenson down the highway in Mosier. They got a thick dusting of snow as well. So we are keeping an eye on the gorge. Brian Brennan is in the weather center. You've been tracking the next chance of winter weather up there as well. That's right. Yeah, round two starting tomorrow. We'll get to that in just a second. I should mention there is an advisory, a gale warning off the coast as the next system approaches tonight. So that begins around 8 p.m. or so and lasts until 1 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now we move to the east winds, which are still rocking and rolling through the gorge. Sustained winds over 20 miles per hour, even over 30 miles per hour in Corbett right now. We had a break with the east winds in the Portland area, but they're still going. Never really stopped in the gorge, and we'll see those east winds even picking up again in front of this next system, which does arrive later in the day tomorrow. Now it looks like it gets to the Portland and the Willamette Valley uh, area by about noon or so, maybe a little bit earlier. After after that, in the afternoon or early uh, early afternoon around 2-3 o'clock, that's when it will arrive to the gorge. Now the forecast for areas around the level of Columbia River, maybe downtown Hood River and Stevenson, that should be above freezing. So not looking at significant icing there or along I-84, but areas above 500 feet, just a few degrees cooler, could get a good amount of uh, snow or some light freezing rain as well and sleet. So we'll have much more on this and all the snow we're going to be racking up in the Cascades coming up this week in the full forecast. Oh boy. All right, Brian, thank you. We'll see you soon. And for the latest on the forecast in your area, check in online anytime at KGW.com. Hey, and you can download our new Portland weather app to get alerts sent straight to your phone. So here's a friendly wager. If we win, you have to wear a Timbers jersey all day and send a video back congratulating our team. And if you win, I'll do the same for United. Atlanta United will win the MLS Cup, and I look forward to seeing you in our jersey. And by the way, what size should we reserve for you anyway? Oh, it's on, people. Mayor Ted Wheeler throwing down the gauntlet on Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms as both teams Face off right now for the MLS Cup. The Timbers log is in Atlanta tonight, and so are a lot of the members of the Timbers Army. Orlando Sanchez caught up with them before the match, scheduled to start here in just a few minutes. 
Let it rain, let it pour, it's been coming down all day. The Timbers bringing Portland to Atlanta. Portland weather! <laughs> this is sunshine in Portland, people! <laughs> what more could you ask for? Even down to the food trucks. The Timbers Army lined up by the hundreds to get their tickets. It's a championship game and we said, we're there. Supporters showing love to KGW. A new scarf for the collection. I'm glad everyone came out. So it's, it's, it's one of those things you just kind of wait for. Let Timber Joey taking in the festivities. Sawdust in the air. This is what it's all about. Another log slab ready to go. Hoping for the same result as 2015. You know, we cut one in Columbus. And when I went to bed last night, I said, you know, we got to cut one before the game today. We have to cut one uh, before the championship. We had that. That log will go back to Portland with us, and th that hopefully will be the same uh, same special piece and, and piece of pride that we have that, with the one from Columbus is still up in Portland today. And now the march is on to Mercedes-Benz Stadium kickoff just moments away. We'll break down this MLS Cup final coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. Reporting from Atlanta, Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. Ah, uh, liquid sunshine. Hey, Timbers fans here in Portland are fired up about this match. Our Art Edwards is live tonight at the Baghdad Theater in Southeast Portland for fans. It's a huge watch party tonight, Art. Well, it is. You know what? Everybody should have stayed here because it's not raining. This is the perfect place to watch the MLS Cup match. They could put over 500 people here inside the Baghdad Theater, and it is packed. They tell me they sold it out in about 30 minutes earlier today. There were people outside at 10 o'clock in the morning, so you can see what it looks like inside the theater as they're getting ready for this match to start. I tell you what, everybody here is fired up. They are ready. Just to, you know, they're just ready to see this team play this match, and they're really hoping for a Timbers win. Of course, we talked to some of the fans before everything got started. It's exciting that they're in the finals, but there's always like that what if feeling, and so uh, it'll be fun here with a bunch of friends, and we're all family at, uh, that are fans, so it'll be exciting. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Timbers are good on the road in the in the playoff season, so hopeful. Um, but you know the Atlanta team or the fans there, just seventy thousand fans. It's going to be hard. <laughs> Well, it is going to be hard. I tell you what, these two teams have played twice, both in the regular season, once this year, once last year. Both of them won one draws. Everybody here feeling pretty good about this because the Timbers have been playing so well. More than 500 people packed inside the Baghdad Theater, and they are ready to get it going. Nino, back to you. That's going to be so much fun. All right, Art, have a great time. Thank you. Our coverage of the MLS Cup continues online. Hey, follow Orlando Sanchez on Facebook and Twitter. He is going to be posting up a storm down there in Atlanta during the game. He'll also be live with highlights after the match. You can catch him only here on KGW News tonight at 10 and 11. Okay, this is a story. We didn't really know where to put it in the newscast because it's a little weird. It's a little gross, but today Multnomah County got people together to talk about pee and poo. Yes, and what is going to happen when you can't flush your toilet after a big earthquake? Well, the answer is a big plastic bucket, folks. Maybe you'll have one ready to go if you painted it a nice color and put it with your emergency kit like folks did today. We've done stories on this before. Line a plastic bucket with a garbage bag. Have some wood shavings ready to cover over the top of it for use in an emergency. And today the county was trying to get that important message across that there might not be working sewer system when the big earthquake hits. So you need to be prepared. Paint one up. <laughs> 